Well, uh, thanks very much for the invitation to speak um, about micro seismic, uh, seismic monitoring at the Decatur site and also impressive crowd for a Friday afternoon, so thanks for sticking around. I do want to acknowledge my co-authors all are part of the Induced Seismicity Project um, at the USGS in Menlo Park. And um, I want to start out with the motivation of why we study induced seismicity in CO2 sequestration sites. This was really um, the USGS effort of assessing the potential for CO2 sequestration was done um, last year by Warwick and identified the major regions of, um, of a resource potential and found that the storage capacity is actually quite large, 500 times the 2011 output of CO2. And a vast majority of those resources are in what are undisturbed saline formations. So um, that haven't seen a whole lot of injection production. I was actually quite surprised to see as much injection and production in Illinois in the previous talk. Um, and of course, the induced seismicity concerns have been raised by Mark Zobeck, Steve Corley, and Hitzman and all, that if you inject uh, this much CO2 in undisturbed aquifers, you, you can uh, create seismicity, not only seismicity that uh, most of the rest of the session is concerned with, that um, has an effect on surface structures, but also that can breach confining layers and basically render your sequestration operation in Complete. So a little bit on the background of the CCS uh, project, the Illinois Basin itself, in particular the Mount Simon shown here, the thickness of the Mount Simon is one of these uh, undisturbed saline formation, uh, formations and the goal is to evaluate the feasibility of geological sequestration here. There's a large project going on that the Illinois State Geological Survey leads uh, in uh, conjunction with ADM, the producer and provider of the uh, CO2 in the area. and what has been done for the last three years and was stopped two days before Thanksgiving was to inject roughly 1,000 tons a day of supercritical CO2 right above basement. And uh, this was the first phase of the project. The um, second phase of the project will actually triple the injection rate of the second injection well just to the north of the current one, and that will start next year. Now, um, Mark Zobeck and Steve Korolik uh, raised this issue. If the Illinois Basin is actually targeted as one of the major CO2 sequestration locations and you inject 100 million um, metric tons of CO2 over 40 years, your region of increase of pore pressure will extend quite a ways out. It will be close to the uh, Wabash uh, Valley uh, seismic zone, but also will have a large region of, uh, of influence where it may or may not encounter uh, critically stressed faults in the basement that haven't been known prior. So. Uh, now to focus in a little bit more on the Decatur site itself, the injection occurs right down here, um, right above the, um, the crystalline basement. There's a pre-Mount Simon unit, which is rather thin. And uh, injection is done at this current well. Shown here is the porosity log from this particular well, and then shifted slightly from the verification well to make them coincide vertically is another log. So a lot of this data is available, not just porosity, permeability, and so on. Many studies outside of just induced seismicity have taken place here. And uh, there's a large array of pressure monitoring systems in there. Um, it's an extent, extensive evidence, of course, of heterogeneous permeability structure vertically. Horizontally, it's not quite clear. I hope um, I can show that it is most likely um, very heterogeneous horizontally as well. And it's an interesting site to study this because similar to the physics of wastewater injection, um, much of the problem is similar except for buoyancy, compressibility, and the mobility of the supercritical CO2. Uh, the same concerns, of course, for um, triggering seismicity in the either basement or in the reservoir rock is if you change pore pressure, you can induce earthquakes. If you add mass and displace water, um, you can uh, increase stresses on critically uh, stressed faults and the pore elastic changes, of course, also. I think this uh, site provides a uh, wonderful opportunity to learn about some of these um, problems with induced seismicity. Our approach is to, uh, for one, start with the seismic monitoring, which I'll talk mostly about today, do um, borehole in situ stress analyses um, at some of these wells, and then eventually go into uh, models of, uh, coupled models of uh, hydromechanical and possibly thermal hydromechanical uh, models of injection and deformation. So the seismic network was installed starting in July of 2013. The green stations here are surface stations, only nine of those are in. Uh, the blue stations here are uh, borehole stations that have uh, three component 
uh, borehole si uh, geophone at about 150 meters, but also an epicensor accelerometer installed at the surface. Uh, just yesterday, the fourth um, borehole station, just about where the pointer is now, came online. Um, all 12 stations, uh, all 12 stations, not the 13th one, were um, operational by September 13. Uh, this station, Deco 6, was added a little bit later. And for those of you looking at seismic signals, you'd be interested to know there's a Caterpillar plant right here. And there's the ADM ethanol plant right here. These are train tracks where uh, trains with <laughs> corn come in, unload the corn, and then circle around and venture out. So it's a bit of a challenging location, to say the least. Um, obviously, we want to find out exactly the depth of um, uh, where the seismicity occurs, and the uh, premier ingredients for that. Ingredient for that, of course, is a, a good velocity model. We uh, acquired a zero offset uh, VSP at the CS1 well from uh, the EPA and augment and basically fit uh, piecewise constant um, intervals to it to get a, a velocity model from that. We augmented this with the uh, crystal embasement velocities from an um, acoustic log. And then here, this is a different scale. This is a sonic log from one of our. Uh, borehole stations and it ties the velocities, tie in nicely what we um, got from there. Uh, we did some simultaneous inversions of um, hypocenters and, and velocity, came up actually with a quite high VPVS ratio. We have talked to uh, Schlumberger Carbon Services who run a downhole string, actually two downhole strings down there. And they obviously have uh, better control on depth and locations of at least some of the events. And uh, they found that um, S wave certainly isn't constant with regard to P, and there are um, fairly large changes in that. So um, we're still trying to um, work together closely with Schlumberger Carbon Services to finalize exactly where the depths are. But uh, we we're getting pretty close. We're within a couple hundred meters of where their depth and locations are. So uh, pretty confident in those. So to the actual catalog, so far we've detected roughly 250 events, 130 or 140 of those are locatable. What you'll see here is the injection well right here in green again, all the stations. And then the dots here is seismicity. They're scaled in size by magnitude. The largest event we've had so far is a 1-1 one, one, uh, moment magnitude. The smallest event is a minus 1-1. One, one. The colors here indicate uh, time starting in July of 13. Most of the events were um, to the, directly to the north of the injection well. And then in September of 2016, this cluster about 2.8 kilometers to the west of the injection well became active. That also had the 1.1 in it. We then added the station here, so we don't have very good focal coverage for the first events, but later on it's improved a little bit. More recently, in July of this year, this northern cluster became available and uh, seismicity in this cluster itself right around the injection wall, as you would expect, remains pretty constant, uh, constantly active through time. We do uh, the usual double difference relocation to try to refine the locations relative to one another and get better, um, a better idea of what the structure actually, the structures are. And if, you, um, if you're so inclined, maybe you can see a lineation in this orientation right here of this particular um, of this particular cluster. It's uh, not quite as straightforward for these two clusters. They do, however, tighten quite significantly. Um, to further understand whether we are actually activating or seeing activation of um, basement faults that are optimally oriented, we solved for focal mechanisms. I'm showing here a few that are representative of the particular clusters. And most of them actually seem to make sense with the interpretation that a pre-existing north northeast striking um, strike slip fault, uh, right lateral, um, could, could be active here as well as in these, these other clusters. So it's quite uh, conceivable that, that most of these are actually reactivating. At least the ones that we're seeing are reactivating structures that are already there. Luckily, so far, nothing uh, very large. Uh, this is very consistent with um, borehole measurements of uh, maximum horizontal stress from CCS1. Um, this is provided by the uh, Illinois State Geological Survey. So the principal axis here of maximum compressive stress lines up rather, uh, rather well with the focal mechanisms here. Now to put this into the context of the regional seismicity, the Wabash Valley uh, 
fault or seismic areas right here. It's about 100 kilometers, I apologize for the missing scale. It's about 100 kilometers or so south. Focal mechanisms in this area are pretty much uh, identical to what we see um, around the Decatur injection site. So it's uh, consistent with regional stress orientation, what you expect from seismicity in those locations. So obviously um, also important is where are the depths, where exactly are we? So right here I plotted the moment magnitude versus depth here. The clusters, this one, the black one around the injection well, blue one to the north and uh, red one to the west are color-coded here to make, um, make better inference of that. And so the most important part of all the events so far are well below the Eau Claire cap rock, which is up here. So no uh, damage to the cap rock could be expected at this point. Uh, the injection interval is right here, right above basement. Um, these locations are probably uh, pretty close to what uh, Sean Bajay gets. I would probably put a realistic uncertainty in the vertical of about 100 meters, but we're pretty confident that we're not going above this. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of data that is available. It's the same figure I showed before. And on the right here now, this is actually bottom hole pressure in the injection well. And uh, the dashed line here indicates an event where uh, the well was shut in. These four plots are actually corresponding to pressure changes along these different um, pressure monitors in the verification well about 300 meters away. And you can see there's good pressure communication to zone three in the actual active injection zone right here. Zone four right above it, you see a slight delayed response, but much, much smaller. So not much pore pressure communication above this lower permeability zone right above the CO2 injection location. And then the ones further up that are here, uh, six here and here, there's no response at all on the pressure. So how does this line up with the depth? I've now sort of drawn in these low permeability hydrologic baffles. And we see all the seismicity roughly lies below it. So not much happening above, which is a good, um, a good sign. So are these baffles actually uh, effective at insulating port other regions of the reservoir in the Mount Simon? from pore pressure changes. And alternatively, could a basal layer in other locations like wastewater injection um, actually reduce pore pressure changes in the basement? So uh, I'm not putting this slide in gratuitously or because I want to be an alarmist, but the obvious uh, site uh, that is similar in the tectonic setting um, in the injection location is the Youngstown, Ohio, which is roughly 100 kilometers to um, the east maybe a little farther than that, that had a 3.9, and Paul Shea had some really interesting pore pressure modeling results earlier today. And uh, their injection actually happens right above the basement too, possibly in the basement. That's not quite clear. Paul would have a better answer to that. So it's very similar in the sense of uh, stress orientations of the main events, uh, location of the injection, but um, the injection volume is roughly uh, an order of magnitude smaller when you, once you account for the in situ volume at, at reservoir conditions of the CO2. The well head pressures, however, were roughly double those of, of Decatur. So why are those events much smaller? That's an interesting question, I think, going forward that this site may allow us to, uh, to understand better. So in, in conclusion, I want to wrap up that so far we've uh, only found small seismicity, small magnitude seismicity in three distinct clusters. Most of these are in the granitic basement, so clearly indicating there is poor pressure communication into the basement reactivating previously um, existing faults and fractures. And um, the focal mechanisms support that evidence. Uh, poor pressure communication is most likely in the lateral sense through high permeability zones, possibly fracture flow, and much past of what homogeneous models of poor pressure perturbation that are, are not um, ready for publication indicate or not allowed to be published because they're part of ISGS's um, uh, work, um, they're well, the clusters are well, far, well beyond the actual um, changes of, of pore pressure that would be of any um, significance. And so then um, these low permeability hydrologic baffles also um, seem to reduce the pore pressure communication to the higher levels, which um, then begs the question in, in other injection uh, locations whether these things can actually um, help in insulating basement from pore pressure. And if they don't, um, what are the other effects that are really important in these injection um, pro induced um, seismicity problems? What, what are the effects of poor elasticity and so on? And so we hope to, um, to investigate those at the Decatur site. Thanks very much.
Thank you, Ole. We have time for one question. Yeah, so the question is how do our locations compare um, to those monitored by, in this case, it's Schlumberger Carbon Services that have the downhole string. So we've actually interacted with them quite a bit. Um, initially, our depths were well to um, way too low. Uh, we've since updated our, um, our um, starting locations um, and relaxed some of the conditions on, on um, the S weighting of the arrivals because of these changes in the, velo in the S velocity in particular that we, we don't have. Um, since we've made those, we're, we're within a couple hundred meters or so, horizontally much better than that, uh, but in the vertical within, I would say, about 100 meters of the events that Schlumberger gets now. 